Hello and welcome to episode 12. We're broadcasting from the future and we're in a music recording studio. But don't worry, this video is all about the ZR1 and we're in this studio for a reason which I'll reveal at the end of the video and um, you will find out exactly why. Hope you enjoy the episode guys. Hello and welcome back to Autofunk. We are broadcasting on location today in Northamptonshire for the 70th anniversary of the UK Corvette Owners Club. We're at an aerodrome called Cywell Aerodrome, funnily enough. We're filming later in the day today, it's a Sunday, but um, this field was full of Corvettes up until quite recently and it's emptying rapidly. But we've taken a quiet time to just um, film this intro quickly. We've got the ZR1 making its debut appearance at its first show. So we've trailered it down here. We wanted to show you guys the, the car in person. This is Chris's C5 as well. Yeah, so I've got the C4 down. and the C5. And there it is, looking a little bit rough and sorry for itself. It's nice to get it out in the open yeah, it's and get it off now. the drive, isn't it? And we've, so, we've taken the T-top off as well to give it a chance to... Um, a good day's airing. To air out a little bit. Good day's airing. So thank you to all of you guys that have stopped by and had a chat with us. We've had a great day today. It's been really good fun and actually this, the weather's held out. Plan is next year we want to bring it back to the same, the same event and uh, hopefully the car will be yeah, in a lot right. better condition and we'll, we will have driven it here. So that'll be huge progress if that's the case. But yeah, it's been, it's been good, to, good to have the car at the show. If you've got a Corvette or you're interested in Corvettes, I'd definitely recommend joining the um, Corvette, the CCC UK Corvette Club. Classic Corvette Club UK. It's I a think. little bit of a mouthful. It's, a mouth, it's like yeah. a tongue twister, isn't it? It is a tongue twister. Lots of C's Cath in it. Classic Corvette Club UK. It's the one. Um, but yeah, it's a really great club and they've put on an amazing show here. Awesome venue. There's like a 1930s Art Deco restaurant and pub, which looks a bit like the inside of a yacht or something like that. It's awesome, really. We'll go in. Cool, we'll yeah, some footage of that. Yeah, we'll go in there and film some footage of it. It's a very cool looking place in there. Mm. But yeah, it's cool, cool venue, sun's out, loads of cool cars to look at. So we'll have a walk, walk around and show you guys some of the, uh, the cars that are on display here. In this week's episode, what we're going to do is have a walk around the show and show, show you some of the cars and some of the stuff that's going on here. And then at the end of the video, we are going to go to Cambridge and we're going to plug this ECU into Vince's ZR1 to see if the fault carries over into his car. So we should categorically know at that point whether or not the ECM is at fault. But at the minute, we've not filmed that because that's tomorrow. So we can't give you an answer or any sort of like, you know, clues as to whether or not the ECU is broken, but we'll find out and we're gonna, we're gonna film that as well for you. We have run the car a few times today and about 50% of the time it ran quite nicely. Yeah. And 50% of the time it ran less nicely. It actually, it, dr it drove on and off the trailer, which, which was good. And it seemed to be running quite nicely. Then earlier on I started it and it, <laughs> yeah. it ran Mess terribly. Mess firing and smoking. And then more recently we started it again. And it ran really nicely. It seemed to run really nicely. So I don't know what's going on with it. It's classic bad solder joint somewhere, bad wire, we'll start cable. We'll start it now and see what happens. Mm. Not, not terrible. Clearly misfiring. It's, just, it's basically still running, running the same as it did before. It's just, it just doesn't feel quite right, does it? No. It's just like, I'd describe it as like a flutter rather than a hard misfire. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's frustrating.
Chris's dad thinks that the fault is because it needs an Italian tune-up. Yeah. <laughs> he reckons if we take it on a private test track and give it a good thrash, it'll yeah. sort it out. Industrial estate. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no, private test track. Yeah, private test track. And thankfully, we're at a runway today. No, I'm joking, we're not going to do that. I mean, we, <laughs> I could actually, I could take it for a lap around the field. <laughs> you could take it for a lap around the field. Should I take it for a lap around the field? Why not? Yeah. Go on then. No donuts, though. I won't do any donuts. I'll just take it for a little lap. Okay, this is kind of its first drive. Ready? Yeah. Actually, it's rude to miss the opportunity to give it a little drive under its own power. What's the handling like? Oh yeah, it handles brilliantly. <laughs> I do a wheel spin, but I'll get told off. No, don't do any wheel spins. I won't do any wheel spins. I don't think you've got the power spins. anyway, to be honest. What's that? I don't think it's got the power. I bet you it has. <laughs> I bet you it hasn't. <laughs> I'm not going to do a wheel spin, that'd be stupid. <laughs> it looks quite good from a distance, you know. It really does not look that bad. So I have the camera shaking about, walking with it. There's another one. It actually feels all right to drive. What's there, any, any bush noises or anything you notice? No. Feels quite solid. It feels quite solid. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's an indication of how MOT drivable it is. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, the steering feels really nice. It is a low mileage car at the end of the day. Do you want to drive it? I'll have a go. Hey. That's the first time. I got it in second. Got it in second? Yeah, it works. First and second. The I think the clutch feels nice. The clutch is lovely. Just using this as an ex excuse, really, to uh, drive the car. What do you think? I don't see any reason if that engine wasn't smooth, it wouldn't pass an MOT. I mean, from driving it 10 miles an hour. Yeah, from it's driving right. it 10 miles <laughs> an hour, yeah. No, it's the, the damping and everything seems yeah, fine, it, doesn't it? There's no rattles or knocks or anything. It feels really nice. Really nice. I haven't tried the full power mode yet. No. <laughs> well, let's go and have a look around the show and have a look at some cars. Wow. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Chris likes the look of this chrome bumper C3. It's a big block as well. Very clean, isn't it? 7 litre, 454 cubic inches. I like the chrome bumper ones. That's really nice, isn't it? I like, I've never noticed actually this, the way the seat belts are built into the. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. We'll go through the seats. They are a big block. It's like a motorhome engine, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty, pretty special, this one is, isn't it? Why well, is that not in the show? I know it's a Ford, but I always think they were they're an awesome look. They're not too big, like a well, not quite a Cortina size, but I suppose American Cortina. It's, it's small for, a, for an American car, car isn't it? Yeah. I guess it's like a, uh, what's the big British Ford? Gren Granada? What, what? I'm thinking of the period. Oh, one, a one, Zodiac. Zodiac, yeah, it's like Zodiac sized. Usable in the UK and really cool. We need to polish our, um, Headlights. Lenses. Yeah. Probably the last thing on the list, pretty much. Okay, bye. Yeah. It's a bit of a beast, that one. Yeah. Turbo, it's got a uh, supercharger, so yeah. kit on it. It's going to be kicking out some horses, some ponies. Yeah. yeah. Orange one. C3. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and we're towards the end of the last day now, aren't we? So a lot of the cars are gone. Starting to go. But yeah. this field would have been full. It was really full. It was full a when few I... minutes ago, yeah. yeah. Just before we started filming, which is pretty typical. <laughs> to be fair, a few, a few of them have gone out on a parade. Christopher's uh, lovely manual C5. Not won any concourses again. Typical. 
No, I'm not bothered about that. And then it's the poor it. old ZR1. She's made it to her first car show. Which is an achievement in itself. That's definitely an achievement, isn't it? That's gorgeous. Yeah, 56, maybe 57. Just after the cowled headlights, nice C2. So, who said that um, Big block. enthusiasm for the American car in the UK is dead? Corvettes, it certainly isn't. Another big block. Chrome bumper. That's a nice looking Later car as well. C3. Very nice. Red's always a solid colour, isn't it? Yeah. Really? Very solid colour. Nice C6. They're missing a C4 here. I mean, maybe the old. Uh... I know. Well, wait I think they're waiting for that ZR1 to appear here. Ah. That's a Z06, that's a hot one. That's cool, isn't it? Another Z06 and the... I love the colour of that, look at that. Yeah, nice. What about the uh, Miami Vice spec? Jan Hammer. Is that a white on white on white? That is seriously 80s, isn't it? Yeah, proper job. You don't get any more 80s than that. It's on Belgian plates. Wow, he's come a long way. Oh, he's come away from Belgium. Yeah. Probably drove it here as well. I bet he did. I love this green one. Yeah, bullet green. If you ever come to an airfield, it's pretty windy, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice. Right, let's have a look round ZR1. <laughs> It's not shit. So it's not completely and utterly trashed. Sorry, yeah, not, yeah. You noticed it's got the earlier yeah, front I did, on it? Yeah, I noticed that, yeah. So I think this was like, was this 1990 only? They had this front. G is 89, isn't it? Uh, is G 89? I think so. G is 89, 90, isn't it? Could be, it could be up to 90, know. yeah. Could be up to 90. I didn't know, I don't think they came out on an 89. I think they started on a... 90, so that must a be a 90, yeah. It's had some work. Quite like that. Uh, if anybody knows what that means, the high back 368. That's a chip, isn't it? Is there a chip? Let us know in the comments. I don't think it's the chip. I think it's. I think it's had like a stroker kit or something. 530 horsepower is a bit of an upgrade, isn't it? Maybe it's got hot cams. Looks nice, doesn't it? it does look nice. Why well, doesn't that one look? That does look like that. There he goes. You see all the pieces are there, though. Yeah. Just dirty. <laughs> oh, worn, or old. Those rear lights look really, really clean, don't they? Are they where are they from? This I've seen a couple of C4s of those lights. Are they like an aftermarket light? They look cool. Yeah, I think they might be an aftermarket light. They do look cool, don't they? Hmm. ZR ones are very common now. Isn't yeah, they're everywhere. Sick of seeing them. C4s, ZR ones, very common. Ten a penny, aren't they? Ten a penny. They're coming everywhere. This is gorgeous, isn't it? It's got the uh, the matching red leather driving gloves. Oh yeah, extra purchase on the wheel. <laughs> Very cool. 1960s when they went to the C2 back end on a C1 front kind of thing going on. Is that what it was? Yeah, I think. don't know if they've got any here that's that shape. We had a great day out yesterday at the show and we saw loads of really cool Corvettes. Hopefully you enjoyed looking at that footage. We are now in Cambridge, it's Monday, the following day, and we are with Vince. And Vince owns this beast, which is a 91 ZR1, just like ours. And also, just like ours, it's actually been off the road for quite a long time. How long was it off the road for, Vince? Uh, yeah, it's been off the road for, well, so... 15 years, I think it was off-road right until before 2021. Yeah. I started working on it. God. And you've done loads of work on it, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a bit of a labour of love. But yeah, I've been 
going through much of the same stuff you guys have. It looks super cool, and it's really, it's actually really interesting to to look to look around another ZR1. So what we're going to do today, I'll just park the camera, and we've talked about doing this a lot, but we've got our ECM, which is just here, and we're going to use Vince's car as a bit of a test mule. Vince is going to run it in a minute for us, uh, so we can hear what a, a fully functioning ZR1 should sound like, but he's been kind enough to allow us to fit our ECM to his vehicle so we can see if the fault follows onto the car. If it does, then we know it's the ECM. We'll have to send it to America and get it, get it fixed. But if not, then we're a little bit... <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're a little bit, little bit in the dark as to what the issue is, but I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll get there. So what should we do? Should we yeah, crack on, give it a go? Give it I love the interior in this car as well. I'm quite jealous of it. Yeah, that um, tapping noise that you can hear, that's the, that's the um, cam chain tensioner filling with lubricant, isn't it? That's a normal CR1 thing, I'm told. It is, yeah. Very normal. Well, ours, very... ours did it the yeah. first time we hadn't started it for ages. Nice little backfire as well. <laughs> yeah. Ours backfires, yeah. Yeah. It, just, it, it almost jumped off there, it didn't I, mean, I didn't gear when I started. <laughs> I saw it, I thought, shit, is he going to yeah. notice? That is really smooth, isn't it? Yeah, it idles so well. And it'll idle high for a little bit. What one thing else does when it goes onto closed loop, yeah. that's when it usually starts to go wrong. Yeah. Right. When it's okay. cold, it's fine. Right. When it goes into closed loop, yeah. it goes yeah. wrong. Yeah, but it, okay. it always has that flutter though, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm hoping that you'll see in a minute yeah. <laughs> when we fit yeah. ours. Yeah, exactly. Or uh, ECM. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's the have you, have you run it until the fans come on, like, so it's really hot? Yeah, Does yeah, it yeah. Run really hot? Like, mine runs pretty hot. It feels like you can feel the heat yeah. off the engine, can't you? Yeah, it was, yeah. I reckon, have you noticed that ours has got that waffle stuff that's yeah. in the, um, yeah. the top of the clamp? Yeah, yeah. I reckon yeah. that's why the previous owner fitted that. Yeah. He probably thought, it feels a bit too hot. It's gonna, it's gonna burn the paint off or something, I guess. Or something. Yeah, well, I, you know, so I've also got a, an oil leak somewhere on the exhaust, so whenever I start it up, I've just sat for a while, I get all this get a bit, of smoke. a bit smoky. Because they run really hot, there is a little gapping plate that yeah. you can get. It sits between the in there and out, and it just, I mean, that's why I've got a, where is it? There's a little scuff here. Yeah. So it sits, a little, the whole engine sits on the top, sits a little higher, and that oh, okay. stops heat transfer yeah. from the main body into all oh, right, yeah. Bring the air temperature down. Oh, like a little. Uh, yeah, I've got, I've got, got some. Ours, when we change the cam sensor, we spilt a load of oil on ours, and it does, yeah, it does it the does. same. So yeah. it has to burn off. Mine does the same all the time. I've got, I've got a, I've also noticed that I'm missing a bunch of exhaust bolts. I, I think I've got a bit of an exhaust. I mean, I can't hear it. And it doesn't sound bad. But yeah, but you might have a little bit of a, yeah. an exhaust leak. When you actually see as well on the other side, I've got oil coming through. I'm not really sure what, whether it's just because quite a lot of the oil like parts in the engine go through threaded parts. So yeah. They have a little rubber gasket or something. Yeah, it's just, just inside there. Yeah. Have you checked the O-ring in the cam sensor? Because it might, it could be leaking out of the cam sensor. Yeah, really, yeah. Okay. It's worth having a look. It's only one well, bolt. Uh, after a while it, it stops. Yeah. So I, I've always assumed it's oil. Maybe yeah, maybe. 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 It smells quite Porsche-like inside. It does, yeah. It smells like a 9 to 8. Oh, it smells like a... <laughs> <laughs> smells like the bottom of an empty fish tank. A bit of whinnying going off over there. If you're wondering about the mileage on this car, it's done 85,000. I've just, just been in and had a look. Totally original. Vince's uncle owned it since it was about six months old. He bought it in America and imported it over here. And it's, it's kind of similar to ours. There's some patina on it. You can see there's some lack appeal here. A few little knocks. There's some damage on the back that happened on the Nürburgring. Um, but yeah, it's all part. I think it's all part of the charm, and it's got the same Euro style indicators as ours. I know some of our American viewers have mentioned about the rear lights, and yeah, this has got the orange, the orange lenses. 
And in case you're wondering about the the uh, the wrap on the tyres on the back, that's just to sort of hopefully preserve them and stop them drying out because we're in a barn in England and um, yeah, tyres when they're sat go hard and end up being ruined and these are these are pretty decent tyres on this car so Vince wants to save them. Well, give it a little rev. Sounds good. It's really, it's really revy actually, isn't it? If that's the right word. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it revs surprisingly hard. Yeah. For, uh, yeah, it yeah, does. Yeah. Put seconds in it, just up to 8k. You're like, oh, change gear, change gear, let's go, we want that again. Oh. Right, do you want to put the new EC, well, not the new yeah. one, our uh, ECM on there and see what happens? I think the uh, the Mustang doesn't like the Corvette, that's what yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I was thinking that was a squeaky belt on shutdown. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Have you taken yours off before? Nope. The, the easiest way to do it, because there's a connector on the top and the bottom. I won't do it, I'll let you do it. But, right. but basically, you just um, pop the top out so, yeah. that the cap, so that the clip's just slightly underneath. Yeah. And then flip it over and do the same on the other side. Let's not swap them around. So, yeah, you just, just so bang them in. That the right yeah, that's the right way around. Let's see what happens. So, will it run perfectly? Fingers crossed. Probably. Probably. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully it doesn't. I hope it doesn't because I want, I want to know what the fault is. Yeah. You know, having this intermittent issue has been really frustrating. Well, I suppose it is an expensive fix if it is not, if it's not good. So in some ways, it'd be nice if it was the O2 sensors. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I said to you. Like that was it was a game changer for me. I was, but I did have O2 faults and all sorts of stuff like that. And it was. How just, was it running then? It was so it was whenever it got hot, hmm. it would, it like I wouldn't it wouldn't idle. Like, you'd be driving along and it would chase the idle. So suddenly you'd like coming into town and it would be idling at two and a half thousand. Yeah. And I'd like pull out a gear and it would just sit at two thousand. I'd give it like a burst. Yeah. And then it would drop yeah. and drop down to, you know, just like 980 or whatever. Yeah. And, and just, it, and then it would do random backfires and it would just, it just wasn't running nicely. It was obviously, you know, it was running, trying to run itself richer and richer to protect itself, thinking it was being starved. Yeah. So it was dumping more fuel in, so it would get backfires all the time. You no, know, that sounds... Sounds a bit like very ours. Very like yeah. ours. Yeah. So, so I, 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 I tried it out, I did a lot of stuff, tried a lot of things, just, well that's what, hence the injectors, and yeah. new, new sparks, and new leads, and all that stuff, just to try, because I knew air was coming in, we were, I knew the fuel was good, got the fuel pressure sensor, all this stuff, driving yeah. down the road with the fuel pressure sensor hanging out the window. Yeah, the, the classic, the, the yeah, yeah. So I just trying everything I could to just check, and then yeah, eventually just pulled up the old O2 sensor out, and it was completely black. I yeah. tried like pressure cleaning, or air hose cleaning it, Put that back in, and, and anyway, so were they hard to extract? No, no, because I say they say they say run it till it gets warm, wait half an hour till it cools down a little bit, yeah, then cr try and crack it a bit, yeah, and if it, and, and actually that was fine, I ran it and it just cracked, came straight out, so mm. and then the new ones came pre cut, it's like copper lube or whatever, it is. yeah. So yeah. if this does work on this car, O2 sensors, we'll take it to the garage. Yeah. Get it on a lamp. Yeah. 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 I and mean, I think that would be the better, <laughs> yeah. better option well, than a two. We've already got the. Computer. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. foolish that we've not fitted them really, but they're a yeah. pain on the drive. It's like yeah, yeah, on drive exactly. hard. To, it's hard to get. I feel like I'm really wrenching on the on the. Um, yeah. I mean, I I, I found. Yeah. I, I was. I mean, it all depends. I guess if someone's put the sensors in with not the right loop and. Yeah, and then you're in. I don't yeah, think you've ever been out. I don't yeah, think I've ever been out. So I think, I think, well, fingers crossed, it should be okay. But yeah, well, that was one of those. That famous uh, copper slip. Yes. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, it's the moment of truth. Will the ECM work normally, or will it? Will the fault follow onto this car? Let's find out. I think it's going to work. You think it's good? What do you think, Vince? Do you reckon it'll work? I think. I think. I don't. I don't think you can have an ECM fault. Do you reckon? Yeah. I okay. hope so. I, w I want an ECM fault. Do you? Because I know that it's a, you know. I want a cheaper O2 sensor fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Here we go. You got a service engine soon, like? 
definitely definitely doesn't sound as nice as it was no definitely not and then you've got that yeah that light there that wasn't on was it that's it's not it's not running nice there we go sure. then it's yeah i'll give it a bit of beans go on then exactly yeah same yeah that's, that's exactly the same fold that we've got yeah yeah that's it There we go. Well, that solves that. Job one. done. <laughs> oh, at least know what it is. At least yeah, I think judging by well, just a quick YouTube of or search of other yeah. people with problems and how how that sounded. I'm, I well, think I'm I'm really pleased about that. I know it's going to cost us an arm, an arm and a leg to sort yeah. it, but but we, it's, it's the bottom of it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's it's probably that and O2 sensors. It's probably both. Well, the O2 well, sensors. The O2 sensors will probably, as a result of it running, trying so to. So rich, it's, they've probably been coked up, yeah, I reckon. Up, yeah. So I'd imagine that's. It's probably a good job we're not changing them yet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Sort of, yeah, yeah weird sort of way. That, that is true. Well, I'm, I'm really. I know it sounds silly, but I'm just pleased that I know what the fault is yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that is. It, it, first of all, it's the cheapest option to be able to drive here. Yeah. Test your ECU. Yeah, yeah. Them, and go. Oh, okay, that's good. Because that's what that guy, the other guy, did was like send it off, yeah. test it in a stock car. Yeah. And we know it's, you know, it's a stock stock car. Nothing else is different. So no. It's, and it's a swap one for the other. And, and it's, it's an identity. And I bet you, if you plug yours in now and try yeah. it, it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Like when you say bet. <laughs> the bug has now gone into yeah, the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a separate brain somewhere. Yeah. Well, there we go. That's so that's it. it. We are. We know. The, mis the mystery. Is. Land. Yeah. Yeah, where's, you, where's, you, where's your bin? Yeah, 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 yeah. don't bin it. That's, that would be more expensive. So what we'll probably do while this is being repaired, we'll probably do a few videos on the C5 because I think it's going to take a few weeks. Um, so what do you reckon? Yeah, do a few videos. And then when, when this is back, we'll get the car <coughs> MOT'd. Yeah. Try and get it MOT'd. Yeah. It'll run like a beauty. Yeah. I'm a, MOT. The only thing that I'm slightly nervous about on the MOT, apart from the tyres, which we'll replace anyway, is yeah. the fuel. Well, the, yeah, yeah, but the, no, but the, the sort of less quantifiable thing is the, f the condition of the fuel lines. Because yeah. they go along the sill and then they go up to the tank and they look a little bit... Yeah. They don't look like they're about to burst, yeah, but they don't, yeah. there's a lot of surface rust on them. You might get a covered in grease advisory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I haven't had any... I haven't had any particularly, other than as the bits I've repaired and the, the bushings and things, the perishable parts. Yeah. Most of my lines and stuff. have been alright. Any comments back? Yeah. It. But, but again, you, know, you never know if you're just you're, you're one drive away from it. Well, they seem to be made, like the materials that they use seem to be really high quality. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, most the like, high quality car. The, we didn't have to replace all of the brake lines. We only replaced the bits that were. Crusty. Yeah, yeah. And some of them look, they still look brand new, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. So essentially the ones that are lit literally in the wheel well. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's it, yeah. Bits that are literally in the yeah. wheel well. Exactly right. So fingers crossed that Vince's car starts normally again now. Yeah, the truth. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have this indoor space. In the barn. There we go. In the back of the I'd say that sounds pretty good. I uh, thought it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Is that all right? Perfect. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we missed initially. It probably had a bit of fuel in it or something. Yeah. On the bad start. But then it came back to the normal. Yeah. Awesome. Well, well, I really appreciate you letting us do this because no, not not everybody would let them yeah, just yeah. you know plug your uh, broken ECU into the I've, car. I've been I've been through the pain of uh, of trying to get this thing to run run nicely. So I think we need to do is the R1 road trip. Yeah. Well, what we'll do yeah, when um yeah for sure I'd, I'd, I'd love that when our, when ours is on the road we'll come over and see you yeah, yeah. and yeah, put them both side by side. Yeah, it'd be, awesome. yeah, it'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I need to. I need to get my clutch. <laughs> Even just then, I was like pushing the clutch. It's just like, yeah, and you're feeling. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. Oh, the clutch feels really soft, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Really. In neutral. Yeah, it's <laughs> like even it's weird. Even the the pedal feel. Yeah. Like I can feel a vibration through the through the throttle pedal on ours. Yeah. But yours feels really smooth. Yeah. That's oh, cool. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm look, look excited about driving ours now. It's really nice, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about as tall as you can get, Rick, because my head hits the air, so that's my, my repair on the roof liner, because yeah. <laughs> it fell down. But. It's like a 70s Lincoln. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I like your red door panels yeah. and carpets and everything as well. Yeah, I love it. There nice. you go. What an awesome car. Nice. Not at all. I'd say the condition of it's probably, if you ignore all of the mould and stuff, yeah. the dirty stuff on in our car, the condition's very similar. similar. Yeah. You know, the, the wear on the dash and things yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, also, the, I have no padding on that, sort of the centre console where, my, my, where you rest your arm, elbow, yeah. there's no padding left in there at all, because oh, yeah. it's just been months, years, like years of someone just sat there locked Don't, in. Yeah. But you could probably get a uh, yeah, normal re, C4 one. Reskin it, yeah, this. exactly. Yeah, but but it's, I, I quite like this. It's like it's been driven. Yeah, right? yeah, no, no, it's no, been no. driven and used. And I like a bit of age, much of the yeah, door. Yeah, give it a good, good whack. Right then, so back to the recording studio. We've um, swung by my good friend James's recording studio. He's a bit of an electronics guy. Knows his stuff, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, so now we know the ECU's faulty. Before we send it to America, James is just going to split it open and see if we can see anything obvious and do a, do a few tests on it. And uh, who knows, we might be able to get it going, but the jury's out. What's it smell like? What does it smell like? Speed. Speed. Power. Smell the juice. Lovely. Does it smell like blown caps. A little bit. <laughs> it smell like mouse droppings and. Uh, Mold. <laughs> no smell I've ever smelled. That's a little talk, so let's see if it fits that. Does it fit? Yeah, it's a welcome, welcome development. Round it. Red air. It was red air. There it is. Semi seal up. You're peeling away. Yeah, just slowly. Wow, wow, wow. There we go, last little bit. Is oh, there a green. gasket? Green yeah, gasket. Green. Oh, there you there go. go. Wow. Little green thing. Yeah. Oh, oh, I don't want it to tear. No, don't tear, little fella. Come on now. She's coming, she's coming. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so that's empty. No bits in that. That's good. I keep some edges in there. Yeah. Right, it's got conformal coating on it, which is which we'd expect, but that makes our life very difficult. Oh. Because so that's you, know, you see it looks shiny. It looks like wet. Yeah, so it's, it's got essentially. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly that. So it's called conformal coating, and it's sprayed with that, which keeps all the shit out, which is good. Um, but it does mean it's a little bit harder, so we couldn't just reflow everything. But what we can do is strip it all down and, and just see. Do you need a magnifying glass on it or something? Well, we're, just, we're just drinking it in at this stage, aren't we? Well, you drink it in then. So what we'd like to do is get this board off and have a look at all the power transistors. Cool. And just see Visually it looks nice and clean. Yeah, it does yeah. look clean, yeah. What's nice is it's not rotten, is it? So it's not had, it doesn't look like it's got had any incursion. It's very clean inside. So mm. there's, there's no corrosion, because even the metal work's been sprayed. Yeah. So it's well built, isn't it, by the looks of it? Hang on. Yeah, quality item. So did he, there's that list on the on the website, isn't there, of uh, on that very very helpful website someone's done with a load of stuff that you can. Um, Do you want me to get the website up and have a look? Yeah, well, yeah, we'll have a look. I mean, it tells us literally what these devices are, what the pinout is. Yeah. GDS. So let's just see. Does this just peel off? Or is that pulling the device with it? I just want to have a look at these beasts here. I mean, we can get to them, but. And then we'll just see if we can measure any of them. You can make it capture against time. And then if you've got something flaky, it might just catch it. So it's more, it's a bit of a, almost like an oscilloscope then. Okay. But yeah, this is just, you uh, You can capture stuff on it. Yeah, and that's, uh, and that's, that's super useful. All right, so I don't know. I don't know enough about these devices. I don't even know what device they are, but one's slightly different to the others, but that could just be in circuit thing, uh, and then just prod around and just see if there's anything silly broken. But yeah, can't really see 
Doesn't, it's not surprising there's no electrolytics. Well, there are the little SND ones, but then no evidence of them. Yeah. So yeah. Just because. Yeah. If anyone else goes to look at it, they're going to go. Who's, yeah. Yeah. Who's been in here before? Yeah. yeah that's had a look. So we're just going to revert it to. Factory. Yeah. Oh, we just wanted a quick visual to check there are no, no obvious dry joints, any ingress of anything that shouldn't be there. A quick sweep across the power transistors to see if anyone was shorted, popped, open circuit, shorted, etc. But, mm. um, but it all seems good. Everything we found seemed bona fide without taking it to bits, so uh, um, we're not the people to do that. So no. we'll let someone else have the pleasure, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. We've... Um We've had a look, well James has had a look, and um, the Royal Wii, the Royal <laughs> Wii. we can't see anything obvious, so we're just going to carefully reassemble it and send it off for repair over in the States. It'll cost an arm and a leg, but hopefully it'll mm. both sort them both legs, I think. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully it will sort the, sort the problem out. Um, as always guys, thank you so much for watching, please leave a comment and um, it really helps us if you subscribe to the channel, and there will be more updates coming soon. Cheers.